This program shows the final stage for coaches in the long-term tactical and technical development of players. It benchmarks the tactical and technical requirements for the players of 16 plus. At this age, players are mature both physically and mentally. The growth spurt has been reached but coaches should remember that there will be disparities between biological and chronological ages. Clearly, by this age, players are competent in all five game situations, and they also have a game style. The first game situation is the serve. Players will have a variety of placements, of pace, especially the boys, and spin. They can and will use serve and volley when necessary. They will often hit the serve in order to dominate the return with their next shot. The return of serve should enable the player to attack the ball with the intention of taking charge of the rally as soon as possible. They should be able to hit the return accurately and defend or attack in preparation for the fourth shot. When playing on the baseline, Players are more consistent, accurate and patient and are able to use the full length and width of the court. They are always looking for the opportunity to dominate and win the point. The players are aware that this may take time. At the younger age, they were learning to build points and sometimes lack patience. Players are also able to use pace, accuracy and quality shots. Experienced players of this age are able to use a number of tactical options to get to the net. They can select the best option at the right time. Their objective is always to win the point when they've got to the net. The player may have to counteract an opponent who comes to the net and so they will need a full repertoire of options. They need to be able to hit passing shots or lobs off both sides with great accuracy. Their ability to play the game at this level will reflect both their physical and mental maturity and their experience. Players will have a well-developed game style and a preference for the way in which they wish to play. And these two players show this very well. They will have a high level of tactical knowledge. They understand the outcome of hitting specific shots. They will have the ability to make decisions quickly, but also to cope and find a way out if those decisions do not quite work out as they intended. They know how to balance the odds, that is how to play percentages. They have the ability to attack and defend and move between the two. They have an understanding of how to play on different surfaces and most importantly they are able to use their strengths and hide their weaknesses. We need to consider the technical abilities of this age group. By the age of 16, players are able to maximise the use of power and use appropriate racket head control. 
They are able technically to move between different skills and change pace and position. They are able to use high quality footwork and movement to their own advantage. At this age, as we have said, the player has a game style. They are most likely to serve and stay back. But they can also serve and volley. The serve is fully coordinated. But racket head speed may still be developing as a result of physical growth. The player does not think in terms of one shot at a time, but of movement to and preparation for the next shot. The issue of repositioning after the serve is crucially important. The footwork pattern helps the player prepare for the next shot. In the serve and volley, the player needs to continue moving forwards, and so the non-landing foot becomes part of a running action prior to the split step. In the serve and stay back, the footwork will be different. In this case, the non-landing foot is used to stop the forward momentum. This enables the player to recover quickly especially against a receiver who hits the early return with pace. The player uses the power base from the ground up. As a result, the use of the coordination chain is maximised. The serve also benefits from extensive shoulder and hip rotation in order to develop muscle energy for the action. The use of the knees drives the racket head away from the body and so increases the distance over which the racket travels. In addition, older and stronger players are able to use the shoulder over shoulder action, which is not possible for younger players. This combination of the distance over which the racket travels and the shoulder action itself ensures that maximum racket head speed is achieved at impact. Because players are stronger, some of them can shorten the follow through. At the younger age, coaches would try to prevent this because of the risk of injury. This shorter follow through can help check the forward movement following the serve itself. The second serve has become a weapon because of increased physical strength. This enables the player to hit with more spin and use a variety of different placements. By this age, the player is strong enough to use the full coordination chain in the action but still needs to be able and ready to prepare for the next shot. The footwork and balance enables this to happen at speed. Players have good body strength, especially in the core.
With the speed of the game, the player needs to and is able to hit consistently off an open stance from any part of the court. The loading on the back foot and the increased separation angle of the hips and shoulders enables this to happen. As a result, the player will frequently leave the ground at the end of the stroke and they will then land on the opposite foot. Most players are double-handed on the backhand. When they have time, they will hit off a fairly closed stance. But they can also hit effectively off an open stance, for example on the return of serve. The racket head has high speed through the ball and the contact point is consistent. The ball can be hit well at any height at this age and the player can make footwork changes and use the knees to do so. There is great dynamic balance needed, especially when hitting higher balls. The single-handed player has a full shoulder rotation beyond 180 degrees. This places the racket head out of sight of the opponent and increases the distance over which it travels. To develop racket head speed through the ball, the racket has therefore moved over a very long distance. And this, in addition to the increased energy from the separation angle between the hips and shoulders, increases the speed of the ball itself. When playing the slice backhand, players of this age are now very able to use the other arm as an opposite force. This arm should be released before contact. The player uses the momentum gained to move forward to play the next shot. Balance is maintained with the split step in preparation for the volley. Players at this age and stage have sound footwork which ensures that the contact point is always consistent. They have the ability to return the serve in order to minimise the options for the server's next shot. They are able to defend when they need to and can still return with quality and variation. Finally, they can maintain good technique in order to attack both first and second serves. At this age, the player has the ability to take command of the net when necessary. This needs early decision making, good footwork, reaction and sound balance. We will look first at the methods which the player uses to get to the net. The player needs to take the offensive first and then be able to move forwards. All players are able to take the ball early to approach the net. They can control their footwork and stroke play to gain the necessary momentum. This could be with an aggressive ground stroke or a sliced approach shot. The player could surprise the opponent and take the ball out of the air with a drive volley hit on either side. Shoulder strength and good balance are essential. The forward movement is followed by the split step and the volley. Another way of getting to the net is when the player turns defence into attack. 
The player could play a lob from the back of the court and use good footwork to move forwards. The drop shot, if disguised well, is another very effective way of getting to the net. Having got to the net, the player will use the volley. At this age, the quality, intention and accuracy of that volley is of a high level and the technique is sound. The player has full control of the racket head, with a sound contact point whatever the pace or height of the incoming ball. Players of this age need to be able to hit a range of different volleys. This would include high backhand volleys and a half volley. Volleyers also need to be competent overhead and so the smash is an important weapon. For many coaches, the reason why they work is to give young players the tactical and technical skills to play to the extent of their potential. For some, this will mean that in a match, they are able to build sequences of strokes so that they win rallies, points, games and matches against school, club or county players. For a very few, realising their potential means playing at the highest level. of us, our responsibilities to developing young players is huge. We need to keep up with the game and its many changes. We must know how young players develop so that we can understand and use our knowledge of their mental, emotional and physical development to ensure they develop their tactical and technical abilities to the greatest extent.